Basically, every individual is tension free. Because basically one is subjective, being cognitive. A cognitive person has no subjectivity. When you open your eyes, you look at me, you close your eyes and open, you see me. Whether you like it, you see me. If I am within the range of your sight and I, I, I fulfill as an object of sight all the requirements means I am lighted adequately. You will see me Therefore, basically you are a cognitive person, tension free, there is no tension, you just see me, tension starts later. When you see an object, there is no tension, then afterwards tension starts, why this fellow is here now? tension starts. Again, I have to deal with this person. Tension starts. <laughs> How will I answer this person? Fasten the seat belt. <laughs> you have to prepare yourself to face the person. It is very unfortunate. Even children cannot just openly see the parents, welcome the parents. Children have to prepare themselves how to relate to the parents. We need to discuss this later. When I say later, I mean it, I will discuss. We need to learn how to even bring up children. So basically, I am objective, being cognitive. An objective person is tension free. It is this tension free basic person is the meditator. It is this person who is already related to Ishwara. The truth about this we will discuss elaborately in another talk. But this basic relationship that already exists between the individual and the Lord, like a tree is related to the forest. All around the tree is the forest. The tree as a self-conscious, suppose it is a self-conscious individual tree, it relates to other fellow trees differently. and to the total forest, it is the same relationship every tree has to the forest, individual to the total. That is a basic relationship. If in relationship there is such a thing as absolute relationship, this is the one. implications we will see clearly. But now, so this 
person highlights the relationship through a mental action or a oral action or a physical action, which is we call it as kayikam karma, vachikam karma and manasam karma which we are dealing with now, meditation. So the basic person has to be basic for which I do a few things and one of them is to keep the people external. When I want the person to be different, which is not uncommon and which is not illegitimate, which is reasonable, if I feel that way, when I want the person to be different, I want the person to be different, period. There is nothing wrong in it. Maybe for others it is unreasonable, my expectation, but for me it is all reasonable. Otherwise, I won't have it. I expect the, expect the person to behave in this manner. Why? Because I will be more comfortable. Nothing wrong. But then, that person happens to be the person he, she is. If that person can change, would have changed to your play, does not change <laughs> either because the person does not see the reason for a change or the person is not able to change, there may be hundred different reasons. Given the, per given the background, the person perhaps cannot change. This is how the person is. I need to accept that. If, it, if I do not accept that, I am the sufferer and the person also may be to some extent a sufferer. So I make the other also suffer and I suffer and one suffers the other, each suffers each other. <laughs> this is called continued relationship. Suffering each other. <laughs> and all that is required is little understanding a degree of compassion, granting freedom to the other. In my love for my mother, I grant freedom for my mother to be what she is, what she was, father to be what she is, what she was. In my love and care, brother, sister to be what he, she is in my perception, my perception may be totally wrong or partially wrong or right. To be objective is to accept that I may be wrong and therefore, in my perception, this is how the person is, spouse including and therefore, in my love and care, I grant space, freedom for that person to be what that person is in his, her own space. This granting freedom is the most sane thing one, one can do to oneself.
unto the ones one loves, one cares for. This is what one can do the maximum or I would say the minimum. Granting freedom for the other to be what that person is in your love and care. Honestly, it's not at all difficult because you care for the person, because you love the person. It is that person that bothers you. The person unknown doesn't bother you as much. Unknown also can bother because in a way known. <laughs> in a way known. It's not totally unknown. Totally unknown doesn't bother you. <laughs> and therefore, so granting freedom is an act of granting. You can do it. It is an act of granting. What is an act? Say, this is how the person is. Full stop. Period. <laughs> I want the person to be different. Okay? Period. You want the person to be different. Do something for it. Pray for it. Prayer is an action, I told you. Unacted upon wish turns into helplessness, into frustration. That person is sitting inside like a bug inside your ear. <laughs> An active live bug which is dumb, doesn't want to know, wants to come out, doesn't know how to come out. It makes an attempt how comfortable you would be. That is exactly what happens to a person. That person is right inside your head. Therefore, we say, this is our culture. I am not saying anything new. It is all done by our masters, our forefathers. We have been advised Sparshan, Bahyan, Bahikritva, nothing new I am telling. I am just sharing with you what I have received from my elders, my teachers. Bahyan, Sparshan, the people with whom you are attached, in the sense, People for whom you have care. This attached word I don't care for. People for whom you have care. Keep them, keep them external. In the sense, retain your love and care with you. They are going to be with you anyway. Let them not be sources of frustration. Let them remain people for whom you have care and love. Consistent. Don't draw a line. I had enough. Don't draw a line. It's possible. It's not difficult. You must understand that's what is required. Not doing this, there is no meditation. It's all, it's all meditation. One needs to be a meditator. Then, Keeping the people, the external people, the external love and care are with me.
I become free from tension. In other words, I am objective. To my breathing, I am objective. I watch my breathing. I visualize my body. I watch my breathing. I can visualize my body part by part from top to the toes part by part. I visualize. Watch my breathing. As I breathe in, I watch. Here, I watch. As I breathe out, I watch. I do not change the rhythm. I just watch the ingoing, outgoing breath. Become more composed. And I watch my own mind for a minute, not more than a minute. Watching the mind all the time is not a great idea. <laughs> According to classical definition of meditation, even though watching the mind is one type of meditation advised, I respect that also. <clears throat> I am talking of the classical form. I visualize an altar. And I have a range of steps. Every one of them has got the same Jati Saguna Brahma Vishaya. The same, the same what we say the the act of mentally offering my worship the same stamp but different steps are involved so when i offer flowers when i offer yeah your, your words of prayer, every, every one of them has got the stamp of mentally praying to Ishwar. This is one form of meditation. Perhaps one can start with this in a very simple form, visualizing an altar Playing, placing a flower, saying one soon prayer in words that one, one is quite at home with, or a Sanskrit verse one can repeat knowing full well the meaning of the words. If one does not know, one can learn from somebody who knows or from a book that is authentic. And then you can come to one particular chant like Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namo Narayanaya, any one particular chant like like even if one is initiated into any Gayatri or anything, whatever it is, one can chant. I am just telling the spiritual culture, in our culture, this is what we do. I am introducing to you what we do. Every Indian should know what the spiritual culture of India 
So, us has to do. Every Indian has got a birthright to know this spiritual culture. In this culture, so this monasam karma is important and therefore, if one one offers one's prayer mentally in any language, in Hindi, in Tamil, in Sanskrit, in Urdu, or even in English, it is meditation, it is mental prayer. This is Indian spiritual culture. It does not have double standards. It accommodates all forms of prayer. Mental prayer is equally valid, but then it has something that has special to offer as a, as a, as a drishtapalam. As drishtapalam, it has something to offer. And it is important to have this drishtapalam. In this meditation, which is the last act in the process of prayer, in fact, it is not a choice of the three that we follow generally. It is one after the one, after the other we follow. First puja, then parayana, recitation, then we follow mental form of prayer. It is not choice among the three. You can choose, nothing wrong, but then the classical form is the first is Kayikam, followed by Vachikam, then followed by this mental form of prayer, Manasam. It has got its own Drishtapalam, like Vachikam has got Drishtapalam. Kayikam gives me a lot of Adrishtam and Drishtam. But Vachikam gives me a Drishtapalam which is, which is its own Drishtapalam laya. Manasam has got its own Drishtapalam. That Drishtapalam I need. I need to have that immediate result as a practice of this Manasam karma. Which is besides this, what I say, being myself, the objective person, seeing myself as an objective person, that is one drishtapalam. The other drishtapalam we will see next time when we meet. Thank you very much. Thank you.